Tonight on Hitasa, we look into the prolific works of visual artist Adam Masava, as well as insights on a noble foundation with a proactive approach to environmental conservation. The early 20th century was pivotal in the development of recycled art. Around 1912, artist Pablo Picasso invented a process called collage where he pasted together bits of paper, photos, newsprints and small objects to form a new image. Recycled art, upcycled art or upcycling art is currently inspiring many artists around the world with its critical message on excessive consumption and environmental pollution. This type of art seeks to transform waste such as paper, cardboard, wood, glass, plastics, metals and rubber into works of art. Now, we link up with a visual artist who uses cardboards and reworked iron sheets to create his thought-provoking pieces. After hearing from several voices from the Mukuru Art Collective, we have a sit-down with the man behind this noble initiative in the heart of Mukuru slums. Uh, my name is Adam Masawa. As an artist who grew up in Mukuru slum, I try to show the positivity of the slum levity. Because uh, normally slums are stereotyped. People tend to think the things they see or read about slums, that's it. But there is more that people do not know and that's what I try to bring out in my work. Like for example, how a community it is, how beautiful it is, how peaceful it is, how uh, kids are social and people are social, how hardworking and honest the people uh, living in slums are. His path to become an artist can be traced back to the zeal he had at a young age and the goodwill of those in and around the slum. When I was in school, I used to win a lot of competitions. For example, the Kiwi competition. And uh, I, um, we had a very good art teacher who, used, who saw talent in me and brought me to the art club in an early tender age. So I learned quite a lot and uh, my skills grew a lot because I was uh, sharing space with um, bigger and better uh, pupils. And then <clears throat> I, I also won a global competition while in primary school, which was sponsored by the World Food Program and USAID. Because our school used to be fed, we used to get free meals in terms of uh, free lunch, in terms of uh, maize corn and uh, beans. And USAID used to give us um, cooking oil. So very basically, let me stop sugarcoating that. So as we were enjoying that, the World Food Program came up with a competition for each uh, uh, beneficiary around the world. So my artwork won the first position here in Africa. Then it was sent to, the, to compete with the other uh, artworks in the World Contest. And I merged the, the winner. So that point, I thought like, yeah, I'm really, now I can, like people, teachers and Fellow students used to tell me I'm good, but then that was like a, a point that I was like, yes, there's something. Adam did not have to look so far for inspiration as he desired to show a different outlook of life in the slum. I tried to paint uh, mostly figures of working men and working women. And you know, most of them are uh, handymen or uh, juakali men so, and women. So I tried to showcase that like women selling in small shops, in small markets, makeshift markets uh, around the slum, uh, men carrying stuff on uh, wheelbarrows and, uh, and uh, hand cuts. Also trying to show kids playing, sharing toys, like for example on this painting, how kids in the slum would share toys, how innovative they are coming up with their own toys. His choice of materials just goes to show the depth and thought he puts into his works of art. One of them is uh, I use cardboards, which I stick on my uh, canvas. 
because you know when you peel the cardboards you, you get the corrugated stuff like mabati so i use that in my work like to showcase the slum roof the structures the architecture and everything that you can see from above so that's one and the second style i collect uh, corrugated iron from the slum um, this is one of them so basically what i do is i collect them when the structure owners are doing renovation to the houses then i burn them in a big fire to make them lose weight so as to be able to bend them cut them and uh, use some nails so i stretch them on a piece of wood then anywhere you see paint i treated it so that it doesn't continue to rust also the backside and the edges. On this day, we caught up with him as he finished off some of his pieces in preparation for his much anticipated Coming to America tour. I have this uh, body of work that I want to do final touches on them. I've already done first and second layers, so now I want to make them attractive and they all tell different stories. Like for example, uh, this is uh, somebody who is hawking mattresses and uh, basically I'm trying like to to create some touches that would be eye pulling so there are some focal points that I am I'm touching to make sure that it looks the part like why would anyone buy a painting with uh, somebody selling mattresses. So I want, I want to create that buzz in this one. I want to show how impactful Coca-Cola as a company has been uh, towards economies here in Africa. Apart from people buying the drinks, or their beverages. It, it is a livelihood for so many people, like people who are sent to the depots to buy the soda um, and spread it around the small shops in the slums. And also the small shops make quite some profit after selling their products. There is this one that is telling a uh, story of COVID, whereby during COVID period, uh, a lot of people lost jobs, a lot of people struggled. So this lady is selling some masks. She's hawking masks around, uh, trying to make ends meet. So this is another story that I would like to show. And it's a story that everybody anywhere can relate to. Pricing art pieces is one of those things that many artists struggle with as there is always an underlying risk of underpricing. For me, because I, I am still uh, a not well-known artist, I try to price my work in a quite affordable manner for people to uh, have my work. I, I want to spread my work around and the best way is to price them in an affordable manner whereby people can, can uh, own some of my masterpieces and that way I feel like my name will grow and be out there. Adam is currently in New York, a second destination that is part of his tour in the United States. He now shares the progress and reception thus far. My tour that is dubbed Coming to America started in Columbus, Georgia. I did an amazing exhibition in Columbus, Georgia at an, uh, an art gallery known as Heritage Art Center. The show was really, really good. The whole of Columbus, Georgia town came to my exhibition. They really enjoyed the show. They purchased like almost everything in that exhibition, which was a great experience for me. Legendary artist Bo Bartlett was also in attendance at that first exhibition, a rather humbling experience for Masava. The feeling was really, really good because he's one of the greatest artists, world famous artists in uh, Columbus. And he really enjoyed my work. He liked my work. 
there was one <coughs> excuse me there was one particular painting that he really wanted but it was already sold and it was really nice to see that somebody in of that stature would also want to uh, collect my piece he followed me on instagram and we're in contact hopefully something will be will come out out of the communication as he eases into the latter part of his tour he is keen on developing his network and sharing his prowess through workshops right now i'm in cooperstown new york upstate it's a small town but a very artistic town with lots of um uh, things that are related with art galleries um, the town looks very artistic the houses here look very artistic and it's a countryside but i feel really happy to be the biggest uh, thing is that i've been going around to schools doing some art workshops um, both in elementary school in high schools and also in colleges which have been accepted really well I've been sharing my life experience, I've been sharing uh, my artistic processes and doing some art workshop with kids which they have really enjoyed. Through his journey as an artist, Adam continues to be an inspiration as he is continuously in the same regard positioning himself to help as many uprising artists from his community and beyond. Just just recently I was picturing myself when I was growing up in Kurusla and I was in one of the uh, tallest uh, skyscrapers in New York which has 100 floors so looking at New York I was like this is uh, I felt like I was in a movie set and for me uh, I I think anyone who knows my story can relate to can can be inspired and at the same time can relate to it and I feel like it's really good that my story is inspiring young artists they are all following me on instagram they are uh, sending me dms and we are talking and i'm also trying to hook them up with opportunities here in uh, the in, in any way possible a true testament is his noble initiative back home that is the mukuru art collective with many owing their success in art to the club I feel like uh, I'm a good example or I'm a good product of people's goodwill and uh, I'm really happy that I can be able to live out of art and also motivate, teach and mentor others. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a also a nice way of giving back to the community that helped me to be who I am today. So. I have a like a, I started a studio whereby young people and kids can come in and uh, be accommodated uh, taught and then they also make a living out of art. I'm really happy that uh, now it has helped a lot of kids, it has helped a lot of young people. Um, you see we have like a group of 40 young artists here at uh, Mukuru Art Collective and that's a very big achievement. Uh, bearing in mind that when I started it was just like something small to give back to the uh, community. Art is gaining momentum in the Kenyan industry with improved public reception, but the question remains whether it is defined an industry strong to enable artists earn a living. The, the whole uh, art scene, we haven't even eaten the, uh, uh, a quarter of the cake, so there's still a huge piece. So for sustainability, I think the art industry in Kenya can sustain people. I'm a good example and there are plenty of artists out there who are making a living, a decent living as a, a matter of fact, out there through art. It's just that you need to have, uh, you need to sharpen your skill and then make sure you have original stuff or something that people can always remember you with.
For many an uprising artist, here are some words of advice to heed from Adam Masava. When I was um, developing my skill, I tended to do quite a lot of touristic stuff. So my advice to young upcoming artists, yeah, you will make some money to pay your bills, but at the end of the day, you need to be unique. People need to, to remember you for something. Like for me, corrugated iron is helping me get a name out there. The cardboards uh, that I, I do, they are also giving me an originality. And people need to identify you for doing something. If people see it, they, they can easily relate or remember you. So for young artists out there, please make sure you, you be original. Please make sure your work is unique. Here's a look at what's to come after the break. It is the responsibility of everybody to take care of our environment. Do what you can. This week on Crosstalk. If you look at Kenya, the mortality rate of political parties is very, very high. high. Manifesto should be able to capture the needs and the uh, you know, the pains of the people. We are talking about manifestos and alliances which are currently taking place between different parties. That's this Sunday at 8 p.m. According to the United Nations Development Program, Kenya is facing many environment challenges that include deforestation, soil erosion, land degradation, desertification and loss of biodiversity, water scarcity and pollution from industry. To remain globally competitive, Kenya has to manage and sustain high environment and natural resource base. Green Africa Foundation, under the leadership of Dr. Isaac Kalua, is keen on changing the narrative through a proactive approach to environmental conservation. We engage Program Manager Mary Motemi for more insight. The rate at which we have environmental destruction and um, what he always, he was, he always say, um, you need to think green and act green. You don't have to destroy the environment. You can utilize it sustainably. You still achieve or you gain the profits from the environment and you also conserve it for the future generation. The foundation, through some of its projects, is keen on enhancing resilience to climate change and environmental sustainability in vulnerable communities across the country. We have a climate change mitigation project. Under this project, we partner with government institutions we partner with uh, county governments and national government, that is what I mean by the government. We partner with uh, schools, that is learning institutions. We partner with the private sector. And we, together with them, we have tree planting activities and seed and seedling donation program. Then still under environment and climate change, we have climate change adaptation projects. And hereby we equip communities with innovations and technology to be able to be resilient and adapt to climate. As they vouch for use of energy that has minimal effects on the environment, they also identify with a need to economically empower communities towards sustainable use of the environment. And our renewable energy program, we train communities and also institutions uh, on importance of adopting uh, efficient energy uh, devices. And our economic development program, we empower communities with skills. Uh, we also empower them with technology and where we can also resources to be able to be self-sustainable. Uh, when we are implementing our programs, we have what we call the Green Africa Villages concept. 
or Green Africa Villages model. And this is a self-sustaining model whereby we advocate for sustainable utilization of the environment and natural uh, resources as you benefit from them as well as we advocate for good life, quality life, we advocate for health and peace. Planting trees is at the center of activities at the foundation as they advocate for proper environmental governance that takes into account the role of all actors that impact the environment. We have partnered with Isuzu East Africa, that is private sector. And we have a, a rehabilitation program for forest, Momando Forest in Machakos County. <coughs> we have adopted 70 hectares of that forest. And every rain season, we always endeavor to plant more trees. Of course, we also partner with the Community Forest Association uh, in, in, in that forest. So together, we are working in planting more trees, rehabilitating that forest to bring it back to what it used uh, to be. Still uh, in our tree planting program, we have what we call Plant Your Age. Plant Your Age, we do a lot of advocacy work whereby we, we encourage Kenyans, whether it is corporates, individuals, institutions, everybody, all the stakeholders, to plant trees when they are commemorating important occasions in their lives. Maybe it's your birthday, you plant trees equivalent to the number of, of, of your years. If it is uh, an anniversary, wedding anniversary, you also plant trees equivalent to you know, the number of years that you're celebrating. You know, that kind of a thing. And through that program, we've been able to work with so many stakeholders and we've seen people planting trees, thousands and thousands uh, of trees. We, we are working with the county government of Marsabit. We are also working with the civil society organizations uh, in Marsabit. And we want uh, them to be able to hold the, the county government to be social, uh, to be accountable for the development projects within the area. They have projects in water, they have projects in agriculture, they have environmental projects. So are they working together with the citizens when they are implementing uh, these development projects? How are citizens being involved in the entire um, um, management cycle? As they conduct capacity building programs at community level, they are working closely with youth and women groups on, but not limited to apiculture, as well as tree nursery establishment and management. Within our Green Africa Foundation Center of Excellence, we have a demonstration site whereby we put beehives. And under that Green Africa village, we call it, now it's a village where we have the beehives. Within that village, we are able to call these uh, youth groups and women groups. They come there, we educate them on uh, what is apiculture, importance of uh, engaging in apiculture, what products they can be able to reap, and all the benefits that they can be able uh, to reap. We've seen them go back, to their various groups, even individuals, and they replicate uh, the same. We train the communities, still women and youth groups, on uh, tree nursery establishment and management. So we have uh, an area whereby we set up a tree nursery. We have all the tree species that can do well in the arid and semi-arid uh, lands of Kenya. So uh, they come, we have all those trees. We show them right from seed collection, uh, pre-treatment of the seeds, putting the seeds, uh, I mean, setting up the seed bed, um, being able to germinate the, seed, the, the seedlings, you know, potting, the entire life cycle until now you have a seedling and you're at the stage of uh, transplanting it to, to your forest or to your farm or to the field. Above and beyond the challenge is not only to think green, but in the same regard, act green. The environment, the natural resources 
how you utilize them to reap the benefits and also without jeopardizing uh, these uh, resources for the future generation. That way you're thinking green and you're acting green. So uh, we advocate for planting of more trees. We advocate for uh, adoption of uh, renewable energy. We advocate for you know proper waste management. We we you know we advocate for inclusivity, ensuring that we have you know men, women, youth, and children on board to be able to achieve our, our vision. To push forth this agenda, the foundation has partnered with different stakeholders and interested parties to effect change by positively impacting the environment. In our apiculture project, in our renewable energy project, and in our tree production project, uh, the Australian Embassy in Kenya, uh, the Australian High Commission, they've been very instrumental in that. They really supported us. Then we have uh, the, the, the private sector, the, the banking institutions like Muhasibu Sako. We've partnered with them, they've been very supportive. We have Kajiado County, we've partnered with them, they've been very supportive. We have County Government of Makueni, they've been very, very uh, supportive uh, in funding our plant your age uh, uh, activities. So we call upon more partners, they come partner with us, maybe you have, the, you, you have the zeal to conserve the environment, you want to take an action, if it is a, a, a private, you need to do the corporate social responsibility, you can approach us and we can work it out uh, together. It is important to note that we are all responsible for the environment because through our daily acts, we either treat or injure our environment is a key element that supports many aspects of our lives. It is on us to take good care of it. The more we are planting trees, the more the forests are being distracted, the more we are losing uh, our forests. It is the responsibility of everybody to take care of our environment. Individuals, the government, the private sector, and all the, 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 the stakeholders do what you can. If it is, you know, giving your skills, giving your finances, you know, giving your staff, doing it practically on the ground, please do it. Having these things are incorporated in our curriculum so that our school, our, our kids, you know, get equipped with these skills and this knowledge right from when they are young to the, by the time they get to the professional level like us they should be in, empowered with these uh, skills. That's it for tonight's show. Remember, you can share your thoughts, questions and comments to the SMS line 20316 or WhatsApp 0786 316 316. Next time on Hitasa. Whenever you want to make a pot or anything on the wheel, you have to start with making a cylinder. You have to be extra careful when you're holding your clay. My themes are usually individuality and femininity and just uh, using bright colors also to evoke that curiosity.